if you have perfect family relationships, I mean, you have no squabbles, there's no disagreements, everything is just like the Hallmark Channel around Christmas time when it comes to family, you can just change this, this interview. Just go ahead and turn it off because you've got it all figured out. We don't, okay? If you're like most of us, specifically me, um, my goodness, family, it can be so tricky and so difficult to navigate those waters emotionally. Um, and that's why I'm thrilled to have our next author on with us, MJ Watson. We're going to call him Mark Watson. His pen name is MJ. Wrote the book, Mirror Image. You cannot airbrush a self-portrait. Welcome, Mark. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Hello. We're glad that you're here to help us, um, as I said before, kind of navigate the waters. And there's a lot to learn from your book. Uh, even though it's fiction, um, there's a lot of real situations. Would you mind kind of expounding on that a little bit and how, what oh, the sure. main message uh, is? Yeah. Yes, the story starts with Doris, uh, who's in her middle 60s, and she uh, confronts, has a, a meeting or a, a, a visit with her granddaughter, who's 17 years old, her granddaughter, who she discovers is expecting a child, mm -hmm. and she's a senior in high school. Uh, Doris is trying to deal with her to make the right decision here, to make a good decision, and as Doris realizes that from back 40, almost 45 years ago, she did not make the right decision in the same situation. At that time, she disagreed with her parents and she left, uh, left home a day after high school, not telling her parents and never contacting them again. Uh, during that time, she has had quite a different life mm -hmm. and she uh, decides now to go back. It's time to go back. What, what she dealt is dealing with her granddaughter. She realizes she sees what her parents were doing, what her mm -hmm. husband over many, many years had said, you have to go home. You have to talk to your family, but you have to talk, go back in the truth. So wow. that's what she decides to do. And when she goes back, she, she's one of many children. Uh, when she left, her mother was actually expecting the 10th child. And uh, wow. like a few months before her baby would have been due, and she just uh, has, uh, she doesn't know what to do. So she does go back yeah. and she walks in on her, her dad, her mom has passed away. She did not know that. And so the story goes from there. So, I mean, a lot of it has to do with, first of all, one choice affects another one and right. you can't run away. I mean, here, this woman right. is in her sixties and she's just now confronting what should have probably yeah. been confronted years ago. That in itself is an amazing lesson for us to take away. Oh, it is. Uh, you know, she uh, uh, she finds herself uh, over all these years that she wanted to go back. She even called her home telephone number a number of times over these years, and uh, or looked it up to make sure that that was the it was still there. It was her parents were still in the same house and yeah. all that. And, uh, but she never really, you know, dialed that number. She just that didn't fear, do it. That fear was just too much. It was, yeah. it was just something she could. And now at this point, she has four, four grown children and grandchildren and, uh, her husband had died recently. So it's, 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 uh, mm. it's another chapter in her life that she wants to go back and maybe, clarify the earlier chapters in yeah. her life. Mark, one of the things you say is that uh, we, we can take away from this is what you're hearing might be different from what's actually being said. And I'd love for you to talk more about that. Well, uh, many times, I, I think in, in a family situations and friendships, even at work, sometimes what we hear uh, someone else say, we're, we're taking it more personally, or we're taking mm -hmm. it uh, from our point of view, not necessarily listening to what they're saying when they're saying it about themselves, not right. about you or about the other uh, person listening or, and uh, acceptance, being accepting of the fact that, I mean, I have four children and they're very different than each other, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and they're all the same sex. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, they, mm -hmm. they have to accept the other one in the way they are. And I, and I think you, we see that in families. I'm from a family of eight. So I know that, you know, we're, we're very different mm -hmm. and you have to listen and you have to listen. And then sometimes you have to just say, oh, well, you know, 
<laughs> that's yeah. what that's yeah. how they feel. I don't feel that way, but they can feel that way. Right, so. right. And and we have to move past this. We have to move past because, that. We have to do what's yeah. right. We need to do. But if someone doesn't accept it or they argue with it, well, that's okay too. But we right. still have to be and not fight, not not mm-hmm. have a fight about it. Understand that mm-hmm. they can hear they can hear it. If they hear it the way they do, maybe a later they'll they'll rethink it too. Yeah. You know, what's so sad to me is that Doris is in her 60s. And that conversation that could have happened, what, 40, 35, 40 years earlier may have changed the trajectory of her life and how she felt about herself. And maybe she created this narrative in her head about being a disappointment that really wasn't true. Right. Uh, It was. It it was what her, her plan that her parents had for her, which came up instantly like any parents of a high school daughter who is expecting a child it's not something you have in your plan book you know so you know and she just uh she had her own plan for college and things like that Mm -hmm. so uh she wanted to pursue her plan and so she kind of went at it uh out the back door and once she moved along with that plan Mm -hmm. and she realized that was not the best way to go, but did not go back. She did not go back to her parents. Mm-hmm. She, she just kept going uh, on her own. So we're dealing with pride. Oh, very much. Resentment, uh, unforgiveness. Um, uh, right. Yeah. Guilt. Uh, guilt, yeah, yes. Guilt. A lot of guilt for the way she handled her own situation, but guilt for the way she she did not hear, hear what her parents were saying. Like I, mm-hmm. you know, like I was saying earlier. She just didn't hear it. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, the, the story moves on. She confronts her, her father and uh, then uh, one of her brothers, and they listen. They actually listen, uh, and they accept her. They don't accept, they don't understand everything yet, but they are right. hearing it. Uh, and she wants to see one of her sisters. She was one of the older in the family. She wants to see one of her sisters who she was close to, and she does. And uh, that doesn't turn out quite the same way. So mm. she, her sister is angry at her, and mm. you know she explains her life since the day she left, which is, which took her to New York, to Canada, to England, back to the United States and Oregon, and um, when explaining all this and uh, her, you know, her family didn't realize if she was alive or dead or what, whatever happened to her. Mm-hmm. So there, this sister just doesn't feel sorry for her at, at this point. Sure. She's sure. Mad. She's sure. Mad. And the so all come up. I, I love the fact that it, it's not just this night, nice, nice, neat bow. She doesn't go home. She's not the prodigal oh, no. child. That's welcome with open arms. This is real life stuff. I mean, oh yeah, it's not. What? It's not a, uh, yeah, it's not a uh, you know bowl of cherries. By yeah. Any means. How can we apply this to our own lives? What lessons can we take out of this um, in making a decision to maybe reconnect with family? Um, well, I think one of the things is your family, my family, everyone's family is going to do something that disappoints other people. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be just the decision on where they buy a house or what color car they buy, or it could be something very (laughs) serious, who they're marrying or something like that. And we have to, um, we, we have to hear what they're saying. We have to Mm -hmm. know that they're, you know, this is their life and they, you know, they want whatever a green car, they can have a green car. It's, you know, Mm -hmm. But the more critical things, we get over green cars and things like that. Yeah. But the things that, uh, like where to live or to move away from home or to move to another state or marry someone from another country, possibly that some family doesn't understand, we have to, you know, allow people to uh, have to know that people we're going to do this. And when I do something that may disappoint my siblings or my parents, um, if I feel it's right for me or it's what I want, then I have to do it. I need other people to it with, if nothing else, just not question me about it. And, you know, question, yeah, okay, at the beginning, why are you doing that? Or, you know, are you sure that's the right thing? But once someone does something, you have to allow them. 
But coming home and asking for forgiveness for what you did, that's another story. And uh, that's what Doris does. She's coming back, but she wants them to understand what she did, but to forgive her at the same time. Mm. And uh, it's very hard for us to forgive. And it's even harder for us to ask for forgiveness. And she had to do both. She had to ask for forgiveness and then forgive them in her own mind for not accepting her the way she, you know, the way it was. So, Mark, it sounds to me like the big overarching message of this is placing our expectations on other people and how dangerous that can be. It is, but sometimes our expectations are for the good of the other person. Sure. You know, it's not just that, you know, uh, we want our children to go to college possibly, you know, and and so that would be a good expectation. Right. Uh, But, you know, it's a lot of things we would like, we might like a sibling, you know, get back and start talking to mom and dad. You you know, you're not, you had a fight with them, get over it. Life is too short. Sure. Right. That kind of uh, thing. But sometimes uh, as much as we may want that of a sibling, until they want it or until they're able to take a mm. step, it doesn't always work. So love and respect love and is respect. also, yeah. Oh, very much very so. Yeah. 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 You have to, you have to love each other and respect each other and, and accept each other. You know, these things are, uh, are hard, but you yeah. still have to be true to what you really believe yourself. And that's one of the things each one has beliefs, you know, when they, they, yeah. They want to get together with their sister again, but at the same time, you know, why did this happen and this shouldn't have happened? And this is 45 years and we didn't know where you were and all this right. kind of thing. So I'm telling too much of the story. Susan. No, this is, it makes me want to dig in and know more for sure, because I know this is just the beginning nuances of what's in here, but we do have to wrap up. Mark, I know that your book is available through Writers Republic, but how else can people get a hold of it? Um, it's also uh, on Amazon and in bookstores. If if they don't have it in the bookstore, they will order it for you. And there are two other stories that I've also just published. I hope I can tell you. One is Todd, a, a man orphaned, and the other one is Goodbye Son. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're both newly published this year. And uh, they all all three deal with these kind of family um situations. I'm not going to say conflicts. I'm going to say situations. Yes. Understand. Mark, thank you for joining us. I hope that you have a great day and thanks for sharing your book with us. I appreciate it. It's been very nice. My pleasure.